young guys, ball hockey, was it fun? Yeah! All right. Older guys, you guys are getting ball hockey after coach's corner, okay? Thank the Oklahoma City Barons for the sweet OKC oil drop jerseys you guys are rocking right now. Good stuff. Okay, like we said, did you guys enjoy the afternoon uh, ice, session, uh, the ice session this afternoon? Okay, we've got a special guest again. Say, coach was out on the ice for you guys this afternoon. He worked you hard, okay? The head coach for the Oklahoma City Barons professional hockey team, Coach Todd Nelson. All right, thanks, Brian. Um, so did you guys have some fun today? Yeah. All right. So you guys are working hard. That's a good thing. And uh, I just want to give you a quick background of who I am, where I come from, and how I got to be the, the head coach for Oklahoma City. Um, I was born and raised in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Does anybody know where Saskatchewan is? Saskatoon. Saskatoon, yeah. I lived about an hour and 15 minutes north east of there. And there wasn't a lot to do in my hometown growing up. Uh, the weather in the wintertime gets very cold. Uh, it gets down to 40 below. And uh, so we, what we did is we, we skated and we played hockey growing up. And uh, it's one of those things where I started skating at two years old and I, and I started playing organized hockey at five. And I just loved it. Um, I was very passionate about it. And I always wanted to play in the National Hockey League. Um, just from watching guys like Bobby Orr, I'm sure you guys have heard of him. I grew up watching um, the Oilers in the 80s when Gretzky was there. And so it really inspired me. And, um, and so I played my minor hockey in, um, in Prince Albert. And like I said, there wasn't a lot to do. I didn't have any video games. Um, I think when I first started, there was only two channels on TV and one was French. Now I'm all French. And so we spent a lot of time outdoors. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I was very fortunate to uh, play at higher levels. And I played junior hockey in Prince Albert. Major junior is the highest level that you can play uh, for 16 and 20 year olds in Canada. So I was fortunate to do that, and then I got drafted by Pittsburgh. And uh, it was one of those things where I'm going into Pittsburgh, and the first guy that I walk into when I walk in the dressing room is Mario Lemieux. And, uh, you guys all know who, who he is? Okay, number 66. Um, and then the second guy was Paul Coffey, who was my idol growing up as I watched him play for the Oilers. And the really cool thing about that is that, is that uh, I played three years pro uh, with the Pittsburgh organization. I got to play just one game in the National Hockey League. My first game I got to play with all those guys. Guys like um, Ronnie Francis and Tom Barrasso, um, Yarmar Yager. And it was really just a cool thing for me. I was kind of awestruck going in there, but those guys treated me fantastic. And that was part of my development. I saw these professional guys and how they took me in, and they're really, really neat guys. They taught me how to be a pro. Just that one game, and also the training camps. And they taught me a lot of valuable lessons. And from there, I bounced around the minors my whole career. Uh, after that, I got games in with Washington Capitals, played in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, so that was really cool. And so <clears throat> I was very fortunate as a hockey player, and I played 12 years, and then I got into coaching. And um, played with some pretty good hockey players, and once again, fortunate to win some championships, one, uh, two as a player, and three as a coach. And uh, so when I got into coaching, it was something that I, I loved the game so much, I just wanted to stay in the game, and I wanted to help. Um, help players develop and help players get better. And it really is a cool fraternity because hockey's a very small world. Like I ran into Chico today, I haven't seen him since I was with uh, Atlanta when we go, went, went to go play against Jersey. And so with my coaching career, I uh, was a head coach for three years in Muskegon. I was fortunate enough to win two championships there. And then I went up to uh, Chicago in the American Hockey League, which is the same level as the OKC Barons. And uh, me and Johnny Anderson and Wendell Young were able to win a championship there. And then we got promoted to the National Hockey League. That's when we ran into Chico. And that was a really cool experience. It was really cool to uh, not only have played and got a taste of the National Hockey League, but then to work with guys at that level. And then from there, I came here and I've been here the last four years. So that's a little background on me. But 
there's a lot of things that I've learned over the course of the years, and um, this pertains to not just hockey, it pertains to everything in life. Whatever you want to do, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, it doesn't really matter. And some of the things that I look for in a, in a hockey player are his work ethic. How is he working out there? Okay, because you always have to work hard every time you're on the ice, or if you're not on the ice, you know, you shoot the pucks in your backyard, you always have to do something to get better. And that goes with anything in life, but especially with hockey, it's all repetition, muscle memory. So you always have to work hard. You have to stay in good condition as well. As you get older, your body's going to change. And when you get as old as me, sometimes it's hard to keep the weight off you. And, uh, but the thing is, is that you're always constantly working to get better. Another thing is, you know, it's really important is just having a great attitude. You know, like I, I uh, talk to players all the time if they're, if they're struggling. You know, if they have a really good attitude, they overcome their obstacles. And, you know, if you get a guy with a bad attitude, pretty much he does not stay with that team for very long. And if you guys can talk to you about that too, is everybody in an organization wants good people because good people come together and they make a strong, strong team. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so your attitude, your attitude really carries you um, when you face adversity. And there always is going to be adversity, it doesn't matter how good your hockey team is. Okay, there's always going to be adversity in your life. And it may not even pertain to the game, it could be something personal. And so the thing is, is that, you know, if you work hard, you have the right attitude, when you're going to have a lot of fun playing the game because you'll see yourself improve. You know, I saw you guys working on your shots today, and you all got better after the repetition. But that's something that's constant, you have to keep on working with. So, with that, that's what I kind of look for in a hockey player. I, I was, I've been blessed with four different hockey teams here in Oklahoma City, but I'll tell you one thing that was consistent is that all my guys were fantastic people. They really were. They, um, they were attentive, they worked hard, they had fun together. They were involved with uh, some charity programs that they worked with kids with special needs, and they're just fantastic, and they're very well received in the public. And I think every one of you in here have those traits, and as you grow, just make sure that you identify the situations and then you can help other people as well. But uh, I guess uh, <clears throat> that's all I really wanted to talk about for you guys, just a good attitude, work hard all, every day. And um, right now, unless there's something else you want me to talk about, um, I can open it up to some questions. And uh, you guys can pick my brain a bit, and uh, it can be whatever. Brian. What do you love most about the game? What I love most about the game, you know, it's about being part of a team. That's, that's my biggest thing. I can't wait. When I was a player, to get to the, to the hockey rink and be among my teammates, because you really go through good and tough times together, and it really creates a bond. And uh, I think there's nothing, nothing stronger than a team, especially a hockey team. You, know, you can take other sports. I think hockey has the closest bond among, just among players, and uh, that bond lasts uh, lasts a lifetime. I've been talking to people over the last three weeks that I have not spoke with since, uh, well for instance, we're having our 20th anniversary, or 20th uh, anniversary of us winning the Caller Cup in 94. And I've been talking to a lot of guys, we're all getting together in Portland. Barry Trotz is our coach, he's gonna be there. And uh, a lot of these guys I haven't spoke with for about 15, 20 years. But it's amazing, the bond that you have, you pick it up right where you left off. It's amazing. And you guys can attest to that. I, uh, well, growing up, I was all over the map. I was, um, I started as a forward and they put me back in the fence and I was a forward again and then I was back and forth. So every couple of years I played a different position. But then when I turned 15, um, I made, uh, I made, I guess, the, the feeder team to the um, major junior team at 15. and. I made it as a four, but they wanted me back in defense and I had to stay there for my whole career, so I'm a defenseman. Favorite position? I guess defense. You know, like, uh, 
you know, the game kind of kind of has evolved where the defense can really join the rush and part of the offensive attack. I like the fact that um, and we had a lot of defense out there with the, uh, the second group, but it's a position that, um, you know, like I like being in control where I can see the ice and I come around the net, um, be able to spring forwards loose. And like, once again, you always can be part of the offensive attack. And I think in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I think, or the playoffs in general, a lot of defensemen are scoring goals. I think they said about 90 goals in the playoffs were scored by defensemen. So you can see how the game's evolving and the attack is going a little high quick and they're starting to get traffic to the net and getting shots through. You take a question here. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. You know, like I work for the Edmonton Oilers, so they're not in the playoffs, so uh, I'm not really cheering for anybody. I was just hoping that uh, this final series will go, go seven games. I think that's exciting, but I don't know if it's going to go that way. Really sore? Well, if you take a shot off a leg or something like that, they always say to put ice on it right away. Ice 20 minutes, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and it should help. You know, the thing is, hydrate yourself, drink a lot of fluids, because you, you sweat a lot when you're on the ice, right? So to recover, and so your legs aren't stiff the next morning, you know, there's products out there like Gatorade and stuff, but um, you know, drink water, try to, re try to replenish the fluids that you lost, and always get your rest. So if you practice early tomorrow morning, don't stay up till three playing Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> when I was in the NHL, um, the team I coached was the Atlanta Thrashers. They're no longer in the league. Um, the team relocated to Winnipeg. So that was the team that I was with. Uh, I was forced to, <laughs> because in our business, you know, like when you get up to a high level in um, in sports, there's a lot of money involved, and um, owners want their teams to do well, and they want them to win hockey games. So if you don't win your share of hockey games, don't make the playoffs, then the owners don't get uh, very happy about that. So um, I think this this summer. How many coaching vacancies? There was six at one time, five or six. Coaches, uh, if you can last a good run of seven or eight years as a head coach in the National Hockey that's a pretty good run. Um, so in the situation, John Anderson was my head coach, I was his assistant. Atlanta decided to make a change, so they let us go, they fired us. And, um, and so, you know, since then, we brought another coach after that, and he got let go after two years and now actually make two more coaching changes. So like, there's always an evolving, um, a revolving door with coaches. And uh, so that once again, all of us coaches are friends, even though we coach against each other, we have to help each other out because it is such a volatile business that uh, you always have to know what your next move is. And I've been fortunate to go into my fifth year here in Oklahoma City, but I'm working to try to get back up once again. For a stressful game. Well, if I'm doing my job, I, I have to uh, prepare them, okay? So we know it with our game plan about how we're going to play. So now, all I have to worry about is trying to control their emotions, okay? And guys, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not always bad to have a, a few butterflies when you're playing, and playing in a big game because that means that you're ready to go, okay? Um, but if I sense that if our team's tight, I try to relax, I, like I'll try different methods, if it's um, in the dressing room, I might crack a joke, or I might get somebody, like an assistant coach like Rocky Thompson, who, who has a great personality, and, and uh, he always seems to lighten the atmosphere. And I think that we as coaches, we have to recognize when our team is um, too, too overly excited and too nervous, or, or like not even awake, and sometimes, you walk into the dressing room and you think that you've done everything as a coach and also your team comes out and they're really flat. So you start looking at yourself and saying, did I prepare them properly? And you kind of go through the checklist and if you did, and you get out of that first period but you're not playing well and the team stinks, then 
and the, the first intermission, you have a spirited discussion with them. And you try to motivate them to get up to the game. My favorite team? Believe it or not, it's the team I work for. I, um, I, I loved watching the Oilers in the 80s because uh, Edmonton's only about six hours away from my hometown, so we got all the games on Hockey Night in Canada. And uh, it was a fun time to watch hockey because they were very dynamic back then. They had Gretzky, Yari Curry, Glenn Anderson, Mark Messi, and all these guys. They had Grant Fuhrer and that. It was uh, a team that I really enjoyed watching play. I think Chief would did you play against those teams? Yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah, yeah that was a, a special time for that organization. They're trying to work to get back to that, but it definitely is a work in progress. I have two in the American Hockey League, and I have three in the United Hockey League, which is a big lower than the American Hockey League. So I have one as a player assistant and then two as a head coach at the level. And then I won an American League uh, Calder Cup in Portland as a player. And then I won it as an assistant coach in Chicago when I coached them. My goal is to win one as a head coach here in OKC. Um, well, I, no, my brother was part of that long overtime. That's the one that uh, LaFontaine scored. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my brother also played. And, yeah, and um, I, I've been very fortunate. I played, my bro played with my brother, uh, it would be two years of junior. Played with him um, four years pro. So him and I won the cup together in Portland. And so it was special to share that with him. And uh, I've also coached him for a couple of years. And, and so it was, it was like a pretty good run. But my, I guess my most memorable game was when I scored my one and only goal. It was, uh, that's a funny story. We, we ended up playing Albany, finished our regular season. I was in Portland. And uh, we come back in the bus and we have a team party the next night. Because we don't start the Colorado Cup playoffs until the following week. And uh, so needless to say, we were out longer than we should have been. The NHL season was still going on. And all of a sudden I get a phone call in the morning. And we didn't have cell phones back then. This is back in 94. And I got a call and I asked him, he said, hey, you have to be at the airport in 45 minutes, or like in 15 minutes or so, because you're getting called up to play against the Winnipeg Jets at the time. And so I was all rattled and stuff. So I got my stuff. The trainer met me at the airport. I'm not feeling the way I probably should be for my second NHL game because it was out too late the night before. And uh, got into Washington late. I uh, walked in when, the, when uh, Jim Schoenfeld was having his, having his meeting. And uh, we're playing against, uh, the guys were all warning me, a pretty tough team at the time. They had Ty Domi there, they had Dave Manson. And so they said, make sure you keep your head up. I said, yeah, don't worry about that. I said, I'll be skating quick. And uh, I ended up scoring the fourth goal that put us up four to one. And uh, lo and behold, they scored two in the third, so I got the game winner and got second star. So <laughs> that's why. That's my memorable game. That's my memorable game. And also another memorable, uh, well, that, that was all during the same time because I played the next game against Buffalo in the regular season. I even played against Pittsburgh, who was my, I was with the organization just three years prior, um, for the, the, the prior three years. So we got to play against Pittsburgh. And, and we beat them in, in six games, so that was a pretty interesting time. You know, Todd, it's interesting. You said you didn't feel your best. Now, a lot of these young guys in the third level, well, coach, I'm not feeling my best. How do players overcome that feeling of, geez, I don't feel it, but I still got to perform my best? That's a form of adversity that you're going through, like, personally, right? So you're not, you're not always going to feel 110%. That's never going to happen. It might happen the first day of training camp. And all of a sudden you get banged up and you'll always have something sore on you. It's right here. It's all mental. How you approach it. Um, I've played some of my best hockey games when I've been sick or, or banged up. I remember when I was 16 I had, um, I had to get labrum surgery or whatever they call it now. But 
It was so bad that I was used to, my shoulder used to pop out twice a game, and it popped out. We played a Saturday night game, and it popped out twice, and I was really stiff the next day, and it didn't really feel like it. And I go play in this final game against Saskatoon, and I think we won 5-3, and I had my best game of the year. We got four points. Like it was one of those things where mentally you have to push through. Now there's a fine line with that, right? Sometimes you're so ill that you cannot, cannot function. But uh, we have guys playing hurt all the time. You know, like we tell our players, are you hurt or are you injured? If you're injured, you can't play. If you're hurt, you can't. Does that make sense? You know, you have to play through it. But I think it's all mental. And different people have different uh, pain thresholds. There's some guys that are, they get a hangnail, they just can't go. And they just don't feel right. And sometimes I deal with players like that. If they tell me, look, I can't go, and I'll say fine, even though I think maybe the, the player can, I don't want them in the line. I'd rather have somebody else healthy, healthy that's going to give me 110%. But I think the biggest thing is, then there's guys that you can't keep off the edge. They, 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 guys are great. Uh, there's stories about guys playing with broken legs and broken ankles, broken wrists. You know, was it last year or two years ago? Uh, I think Patrice Bergeron had a collapsed lung, I think, and he played through that. And that's taking that, that's taking it to the extreme, and that was just one of his injuries and others. So, to play the game, you gotta be tough, okay? But you gotta be smart as well, and you just gotta recognize those situations, and, but it's all mental, it's how you overcome that. It's funny, my first NHL game, I played with Pittsburgh, we, we tied, the, tied the Islanders 2-2. Back then there was no shootouts. And um, Wendell Young and Peter Taglianetti said, hey, the guy that you replaced, Alf Sanderson, he's sick tonight, but he'll be back on Wednesday for Wednesday's game, so they're probably going to send you down. So if I were you, I would go hide in the bathroom and put your feet up, because if you get out of this rink, they're gonna have to pay you one more day. Okay, so I did that. I was sitting there in the bathroom after I showered up and everything, had my suit on, and they're all looking at King Nelly. The coast is clear, but um, I forget if it was Ricky Kehoe or Mary Smith, they caught me on the way out. So they said, Yeah, um, can I talk to you? I said, Yeah. So I, I thought maybe they said, We're say good job, or you know, I'd watch the practice tomorrow. But all he said is, that here's a one-way ticket to Fort Wayne because you guys play them tomorrow. <laughs> so I just got the one day of pay. But guess what? That one day of pay definitely made a difference in my paycheck when it came. So I have time for a few more if you want. Go ahead. Surprise, that question didn't come out earlier. I started playing hockey, organized hockey at five years old. Pro? Well, I was 21 when I got called up to Pittsburgh. I turned pro at 20, 20, I guess. That was my first year. And in the game of hockey, yes, things do happen. Yes, you get in fights. And sometimes guys do it more than normal. Nowadays, it's not as prevalent as it was, especially when Chico played. It happened a whole heck of a lot. But the NHL's been cleaning that up a bit. Uh, there's more restrictor fines and, and penalties that they uh, give out to players. Um, but if, if there's two willing combatants and it's a good fight where nobody gets hurt, and, and that's the way it is. But the, the fans seem to love it still, and uh, that's always going to be, well, I shouldn't say always, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but it's always been part of the game. Well, a lot of it's reactionary. And they've not to me, to what, in my case, I think I've only squared off maybe five times. It was always reactionary. Where, like today, for
for instance, we had we had two guys going at it on my end with the young guys. And it's just because they're being competitive, right? And uh, my uncle had played, he had a cup of coffee up in Toronto for three games back when I uh, played with Pat Quinn and those guys. And, and uh, so he kind of taught me growing up, and he used to tell me, every time that you get beat, it's, it's like someone reaching in your pocket, grabbing money in your pocket, and putting theirs. And so you have that mentality that you have, like you, you want to be a fierce competitor. You, know, you have to be competitive to play the game to be effective. That, and I don't mean going out there and fighting everybody, but when you get two guys that are battling in a corner, and um, you know, like emotions kind of come out of you. Sometimes it just happens where you might beat the guy out of the corner, and he might take a stick and two hands you in the back of the leg, and it, and it hurts. And it's the same, if you take it now, you take it all year. So you either go and score the goal, then deal with it, or just leave the puck and then turn around and you have to address the situation. But it's pretty much reactionary. Um, you've all seen in the National Hockey League where pucks drop, the two guys will square off. And that didn't happen to me a whole lot just because I wasn't very good at it. And uh, in the heat of the moment, it just kind of happens. I got slashed in the back of the legs in front of the net one time. I didn't know who this guy was. was my first year in the American Leagues, we were in my fourth year. And I fought him, and I found out after that this guy was really tough. <laughs> And so it was a good thing I didn't know that beforehand because it probably wouldn't happen, but they gave me some street credit because of all of this guy. But the problem with that is that every other one of those tough guys saw that I fought him, and then they wanted a piece of the pie too. So it's, uh, it's not so much a, a game of survival like it used to be, as far as I'm concerned. The game is more, it's, it's more streamlined now. There's not as much clutching and grabbing. There's a lot of clutching and grabbing before they made the real change. Tempers always seem to flare up more, but it still does happen. And um, now, if you watch the Stanley Cup playoffs, a lot of times if there's you don't see a lot of fighting in the playoffs just because you have got to be careful. So if the guy asks, so if the guy asks you to fight, you drop his gloves, he skates away, you might get a two-minute minor and hurt your hockey team. So you have to be smart. You have to understand when it's right and when it's not right. But it doesn't happen very much. These guys are rocking and rolling. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish up with a couple more questions and then we'll, I'll let you guys be. Oh yeah, that's, that's always important. You have to have flair. You know, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he's got the hockey haircut. It's always evolving because the bullet was big when I was playing. You always had the bullet going and, uh, and now, now guys tend to go bald. And, you have big hair. It's all personal preference. So, like, uh, you mentioned attitude, obviously, but uh, if you could point to anything else going into the next year, you know, like what would that be? Like, you know, if you could say anything else going into the next year, you know, what would that be? You know, like, you know, what would that be? You know, what would that be? Um, perseverance, I think. Uh, like, when I was going through that time, when I was 15, 16, I was thinking about quitting. Because I had both, I got both shoulders operated on. Um, you know, like it, it wasn't fun when it used to dissipate on me. This one was worse than this one. And I was thinking, is it really worth it? You know, that, that took maybe about two weeks, then I straightened myself around, and uh, I'm glad I forged ahead. But you're always going to face adversity. You always are. You know, and uh, I think you'll find out that if you stick with things, if you work hard, you have fun, have the right attitude, good things will happen to you in the future. Um, I'll be instigate. Actually, I had that one with that guy in front of the net because he slashed me. Like, I don't know, like, you guys are probably, you know, he had me right here. And you know how your leg kind of goes numb when you're on the outside of the knee? Well, that's the way it felt. It didn't feel good, so I went after him. So I went after him. But it was more of a reaction or anything. And he was a willing combatant, so. So, hey. Side, and they had to step on me. 
I made sure that they knew that if they went to the net, they'd be getting hacked right here, real hard. Sometimes they called Tony, sometimes they wouldn't, but they got to think twice once again. Last one. Okay, so how many guys have you Oh, I'd say I'm 500. Does that make sense? I'm about 500. Win one, lose one. Even Steve. So pretty much it's just been reactionary or the guy comes after me that I know that I have a, I have a hard time handling. Um, you're pretty much, you're fighting like you're on fire. Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> All right, so, you know what, you guys have been great. Um, hopefully, uh, you guys got something out of this. I know it's not uh, mind-blowing because you guys have talked to other people have probably said a lot of the same things. But I really enjoyed coming out with you guys today. And once again, just keep working hard and having fun. That's, that's the main thing. All right, thanks. Just to piggyback it, we're getting ready to go play some ball hockey outside, okay? He talks about positive attitude and perseverance um, and, and having those attitude, that, that attitude as a player, but also this is somebody who, who, who walks the things that he's talking about. Uh, when we talk about the Oklahoma City Barons this year, uh, over 150 player transactions as a head coach, uh, over 80 different skaters through his locker room, nine different goaltenders, okay? Do you think there's some adversity there? And when you're playing the shuffle every night, your lines are different, your team's different, the dynamic's different every single evening, and still was able to make it to the playoffs this year, gave Texas a run for their money, and now Texas is playing for the Calder Cup, and that's a pretty remarkable accomplishment. So hopefully uh, we can get some hardware here in Oklahoma City for year number five. Best of luck to you.